Hey, Algebra One, how are we doing, guys? Um, well, I believe we are official, and by that I mean official that this is the last math video that I'm going to need to record for you guys for this year. All right. Um, I'm sure right now there could be quite a bit of screaming of joy and happiness, um, and I won't take offense to that. I get it. I know math may not be your cup of tea, but um, that's okay. As long as you guys are still putting in the time, you are watching these videos, taking notes, doing the homework, you guys are going to be just fine. All right. Ask me questions if you got them. Uh, we're going to be doing a Zoom uh, before your next test, so make sure that you are on the lookout for the uh, invitation that I'm going to put out on Google Classroom and make sure that uh, you guys also are on the lookout for when I tell you when the next test will be. It's going to be next week and um, there we go. All right, so let's jump into this last video here. Uh, as you can see, go ahead and open up your textbooks to page 801. We're going to be looking at translations first. Then we're going to be going into some symmetry, and then we're going to end it with um, reflections. Okay, so uh, if you want to go ahead and copy down everything that you see here, you can pause the video, do that. All right, so let's talk about translations first. So basically, what the book is going to give you for your homework, your homework's actually on page 802, they're going to be giving you multiple coordinates. Okay. And then, as you can see down at the bottom of the page, there's like our example problem. Uh, there's three coordinates that I gave you there. Don't forget the X coordinate goes first, the Y coordinate goes second. And then what they're going to do is they're going to give you some information as far as saying, take these coordinates and translate them, like move them somewhere else. Okay, you guys don't have to graph these. I'm not looking for you actually to graph it. I'm just looking for you to give me the new coordinates after the translation has happened, all right? So your notes on this are, are this. Uh, basically, X goes to the left and right. You guys need to remember that, the X axis left and right. So if they say you will go left a certain amount of times, that means you're going to take the X value and you're going to minus or subtract whatever that number is. So if they were to say, for example, um, your first coordinate for X is 2, and then you're going to translate that twice to the left, well, then you'd go 2 minus 2, and your brand new coordinate for x would be 0, okay? If you were to go to the right, you're going to add. It's going to be plus, okay? So that means, let's say your original x value is 3, and they say you go 5 units to the right, well, then 3 and 5, put those together, you're now going to be at 8 for your brand new, okay? Now the Y values, they go up, they go down. If you go down a certain amount of units, that is minus or subtraction. So you look at the Y value and then whatever that is, you subtract. And then if they say go up, then you are adding. That's plus, that's addition. So again, take the original Y value and add however many units up they tell you to go. All right, so let's take a look at what this would be in our example problems here. So we have original coordinates are 3, 5, 2, 0, and negative 3, negative 1. And then right below it, your directions are 2 to the right. So that means right, take a look at the notes, we are plus, we are adding 2 to every x value. All right, and then it says 4 down. That means our y values, if we go down, that means minus. So we're going to be subtracting 4 from every y value, okay? And let's go ahead and, let's see, let's zoom in here if we can. All right, there we go. Okay, so we have our originals, we have the directions, and we have some blank green parentheses there that are going to cover our brand new translations. So let's start with the x values. The first x value is 3 but it says two to the right, which means add two to that. So that three is going to become a five for this one. All right, now let's look at the second one. The second X value is a two. And again, two to the right, we add two. That's going to be a four. 
Then our final x value, I see a negative 3, but if I add 2, that's now going to become a negative 1. Negative 3 plus 2, negative 1. All right. Now let's take a look at our y values. Our first y value is 5, and it says down 4. That means subtract 4. So 5 minus 4, you're getting a 1. Then we have a 0 for our second y value. 0 minus 4, that would be a negative 4. And then our third y value is a negative 1. And then if I take 4 more away, so negative 1 minus 4, I get a negative 5. Okay, so that's how you do that. And all the problems in your homework, that is, looks like the very first six problems are all relating to this style right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and now let's take a look at the second part, symmetry. Symmetry is simple enough. Imagine that you are folding something in half. If it lines up perfectly, then you have a line of symmetry. In other words, what you have on the right will match what you have on the left, or what you have on the top will match what you have on the bottom. That is creating a line of symmetry. Okay, so if we look at these basic uh, shapes or these letters that I've drawn out here, if we have the letter D, does that have any lines of symmetry? It has one perfect line of symmetry. So you see I drew that dashed line through it, and then I put a, a one next to it showing that it has a one line of symmetry. The H, that has two lines of symmetry. All right, if we go vertical, we can fold it in half. But then if we go horizontal, we can fold it in half perfectly that way. So that's why that has a two next to it. Now look at the O or the zero, whatever you want to call it here. I drew out multiple lines of symmetry, but you realize that I could have done infinite number of lines. So that's why I put infinite right there, infinite number of lines for anything that is a circle, a zero. Now down at the bottom, You'll notice we kind of got this janky H here. It's not fully a perfect H. You'll notice the side on the right, all right, right here. Yeah, that's going to mess it up, okay? If we try to fold it horizontally, it's not going to match perfectly. And if we try folding it vertically, that's not going to match perfectly. So I had to put a none next to that. So for your homework, looks like 10 through 13, all of those guys are asking you, does it have a line of symmetry? That means that you would perfectly match both sides together. So make sure you're paying very close attention on 10 through 13 to see if they perfectly match for you to say, yes, there's symmetry or no, there's not. All right, now we're gonna move in our notes to this page right here, all right? we're. Stock and uh, we're talking about reflections now. All right, this is problems seven through nine for your homework. And a reflection is basically saying you have a mirror image. All right, so now what I want us to do is we're going to start by focusing on this one right here. The dot that I drew in black that's the original image. Then you have a dash blue line, and then they're going to say, Draw the reflection of the original image. Here's your original image. And draw the reflection on the other side of the line. Now, what I want you to focus on is how many spaces are between the black dot and the dashed line. If you look closely, I count one, two, three spaces between the black dot and the blue dashed line. That means that my new reflection would have to be three spaces because that's perfectly the same and at the same height. So you'll notice the black dot is drawn at a height of five. How do I know that? Because from zero, I went up five. And then how many spaces am I from the blue? Three spaces. So for my green dot, all right, green dot, that's that guy right there. Then I had to go one, two, three times to the right, and make sure that I'm still five units up. That's all we're doing here, okay? Now, if we take a look, 
at, we'll erase that guy. If we take a look to the coordinates on the right, all right, the black dots, A, B, and C, and then I kind of have that gray triangle drawn in, those are the originals. Then you have this blue dashed horizontal line, and the book would say, draw the reflection of the original over that line. So what you have to do is count every single dot. How far away are you from that blue dashed line? Okay, now if we have the original, uh, the original A that's drawn in black, that is one, two spaces from the blue line. So that's why if you look at the green A, it is now one, two spaces from the green line. Okay, let's do the same thing for blue. I have one, two, three, four units away from the blue line. So that means my green blue, my green blue, my green B, that has to be four units away from the blue line. And we count that one, two, three, four, that's perfectly four. The black C is only one unit away. That means the green C has to be only one unit away. So you can see that's how I'm creating the reflection over the horizontal dash line. The last one we're gonna take a look at, just another quick review, this one right over here. Okay, you have the original black dot and that looks like it is one, two, three, four units away from the dash blue line. So that means that the green reflection dot has to be four units away still from the blue dash line, okay? And if we count that out, we have one, two, three, and there it is, four perfect units away, okay? That's it, that's all it needs to be, guys, simple enough. So that covers reflections, translations, and symmetry. All of those different concepts will be asked of you on page 802. All right, guys, as I said, we're gonna set up a Zoom before your next test. Your next test, last test, will be next week. And this assignment right here basically covers um, the last assignment that we need to do with new material. All right, guys, hope you're doing well, miss ya. And uh, hopefully I see you guys in the Zoom. All right, have a great rest of your day.